Hey guys, Mr. Premium here. Today I'll be showing you 10 tips and tricks that will make you better at deep broken. These tips are useful to anyone, no matter what skill level. From Freshie to Ultra Shinobi Gaia Dweller. Oh wait, wrong game, never mind. But before we get into this, I need to ask you all a favour. I need you all to like and subscribe, and comment and other stuff, and turn on the bell. Did you know that negative 1% of my viewers are subscribed to me? That's awful. Okay, on to the tips and slash or tricks. Campfires are an integral part of Deep Woken. Whether you need to heal, spend your investment points, or even summon the ferryman, you always need to make sure you're stocked up on them. Sure, you can go around swinging your axe like a maniac trying to keep up with the ever-increasing demand for these things, or you could do what I do. First, head to the Etrus blacksmith and talk to the boy outside. He will give you a discount on every single item in the blacksmith's shop, which includes wood. Using this discount would only cost two notes. This is a lot cheaper than buying wood at the general shop as it costs five notes there. Assuming you'd want to buy 99 pieces of wood, you'd need to spend only 198 notes. Psst, hey. If you need to know how to get money quick, watch this video. Bells, resonances, whatever you want to call them. Everyone wants to get a legendary one or a corrupt one, but you'd have to be pretty lucky to do so. Me and two of my friends all have teleportation. Uh, I'm not sure why any of us didn't get dimension travel, but it's completely luck based whether you get a legendary bell, and there are certain ways you can improve your chances. One of those ways is making sure that you stay at level 17 before obtaining a bell. This is due to the fact that you can get a free bell reroll every three levels. If you were to get your resonance at level 20, you'd get the first three cards and then three more reroll cards. If you did the same at level 17, you'd get three extra cards, meaning a high likelihood of getting a legendary or corrupt bell. Sure, you could try and do this at level 14 or 11 to get even more cards, but personally I don't think that's worth the extra effort as your PvE scales with level and the bosses you fight would be a lot harder. Speaking of bells, to awaken your bell, of course you'd need to be knocked in the depths. This causes a lot of risks and may potentially wipe your character. For instance, if you ask some random guy to bell check you, and you don't have the bell yet, there's a chance he'll just grip you for your loot. That's not a very fun way to go out. I have two different ways to make bell checking completely safe. For the first method, you'll need to climb somewhere really high, and jump repeatedly to a lower section to take full damage until you knock yourself. I find an optimal and safe place to do so is this place on screen right now. Although you'd need some good agility or mobility mantra to get up there. This method is the quicker, more dangerous option, as there's no telling if some random guy will just find you, possibly a VSP, and maybe a mob could glitch up there and just straight up uh, wipe you. For a lot more safety, I'd usually choose this method. Go down to layer 2 floor 1 with a light hook, follow my path, and simply just get knocked by carbuncles. If you don't have a bell, they'll just grip you and the light hook activates and you're all safe. Simple as that. Before I start making a character, I always like to go to the website deepwoken.co slash builder. You can access it through the wiki or just search for it directly. It gives you multiple options to configure your future builds such as what oath, murmur and bell you want. It also allows you to choose your race, which automatically adds the extra investment points into their respective stats. The website gives you the amount of investment points a level 20 player would have, and allows you to distribute them into each stat. Doing this allows me to plan ahead and not get lost while progressing, as I'm very prone to getting sidetracked. Oaths in Deep Woken are relatively easy to obtain especially compared to getting Edicts and Rogue Lineage. There are also free power boosts to your build with no drawbacks. If you don't want to plan your whole build around a particular oath, just get one that has no stat requirements, as in all cases, having an oath is better than being without one. Oaths that have no stat requirements are Contractor, Dawnwalker, Link Strider, or even Fade Trimmer if you want. Even if you don't end up using the mantra of these oaths, they will still give you passive bonuses such as extra ether or letting you obtain a greater amount of maximum mantra. So they're definitely worth it. 
First thing I do when creating a new slot is I hop on the Roblox catalog and start looking for new, interesting, cool hair. This is because I want each slot to feel entirely unique to one another. The only issue is that most of the hairs in the catalog look very bad, so I end up searching for a long while. Liking the looks of your character will make you a lot more invested in them, leading you to play the game a lot more, and hence improve your skill level. Yes, this does mean that drip is proportional to skill level, as you can see from this graph. One way I ensure that my characters look good is through theming them. This could be colour schemes, or making them look angelic, or like a wizard, etc. Or just make them entirely pitch black, that's cool I think. Okay, echo upgrades are very good, however they aren't the easiest to obtain. I spent way too long obtaining every single echo upgrade. Do I regret it? Not at all. This is because they each give unique effects such as increasing resonance progress speed, or even resonance rarity chances, and they're permanent on every single slot, which is amazing. They also just permanently buff your character in many ways, such as extra mob armor and damage, different starter weapons and starter tools, and also a bigger stomach so you can eat more calabash. Mm. I suggest spamming the Trial of One with every single Echo modifier, yes, including 2 times mob damage if you're a pro, whilst maxing out agility so you can instantly get Jet Striker, then catch a fish, modify a mantra, do a shrine deal, as all of these give Echoes. Now repeat this 100 million times, and there you have it. You're now moderately stronger, you have slightly less inconveniences. If you want to make progression a whole lot quicker, stop choosing Etrus, or Isle of Vigils if you're a strange person, and start choosing other origins. Personally, I always choose to do Trial of One, as I've pretty much mastered it, and it lets you get to instantly around power 7. Doing the trial also allows you to get better at learning attack patterns of mobs. When I first started doing the trial of one, when it first came out and Adept still existed, I struggled to get even past the threshers due to major skill issue, and now it's all easy to me. If you want an extra challenge, you could go deep bound. This would give you a lot larger XP gain in the depths and less XP gain in the overworld. Choosing this origin will probably make you wipe a fair amount of time due to some run random corrupt shadow casting owl or something, or even hilariously being strong lefted off a cliff. That will never not be funny. Despite these factors, I still choose this origin sometimes due to the fun factor. You could also choose to spawn at the Deluvian Mechanism, which I think still gives the same boosts as being deep bound. If you really like PvE and really like being toxic, you could choose Voidwalker. This is honestly quite a fun origin, as you get to randomly hunt innocent people trying to progress. You get chests each time you complete a bounty. I've heard you get more loot from these chests if you spam easy in chat when you kill the poor innocent freshie in Orisia. I'm sure most of you already have this talent, but please make sure you get it if you don't, because it's so so important. Once you air dash, you'll never want to go back. It's such an incredibly versatile movement option, it can help you climb things, jump gaps, and live a better, more aerial life. Air dashing existing makes some of my older slots painful to play on, because they existed before air dash was added, and I just can't go off to go get it. To get it, you need to complete an NPC quest. This NPC is called Ivory, and she can be found in the Pathfinder's Respite. To complete the quest, you must speak to her, then go to the Temple of the Forgotten Flame, the same place where you get Blind Seer, interact with this purple flame, then go back to t talk to her again. This talent is an Echo Talent, meaning it's unlocked on all of your slots, as soon as you level up on them. The most efficient way to get better at the game is to play Risky. I always tend to throw myself at any new mob or boss that I find, I may tend to wipe sometimes due to this habit, but it's allowed me to get a lot better as a PvE player. If you play too safely, sure your slot may last longer, but if you suddenly encounter a strong mob that you haven't encountered before, you're probably going to die. In summary, just chuck yourself at whatever you find, hope you live, and you'll surely learn from it. And there you have it. If you've made it this far, congratulations, you're a good person. You know what? I think you might as well subscribe to me. In fact, I think you're going to tell all of your friends about me and get them to subscribe as well. Wow, that means a lot.
In all seriousness, thanks for watching, and if you can think of any other tips for deep working players, just leave them in the comments. You might even get half from me. But yeah, keep playing deep woken, keep gripping freshies or whatever you do, and peace! Roblox, ah, uh, Roblox, yeah, Roblox, ah, uh, Roblox, yeah, so much Roblox they call me premium, my parents are very lenient, they let me